foundation phase of intermediate gentle restorative practice today. So when you place your body in this supta baddha can actually it's not supta it's baddha kanasana it is not on its back. So as we place the belt across the ankle kind of lids and you press your legs so they position a little bit forward but notice how the knee awareness is motioning outwards and when you're lifting up just to sit upright you've got to have some sense of momentum internally take that direction of your rib cage and pivot to your right so you're going to rotate minus any sand or blocks necessary bring the left hand to that right knee and then as you turn you might have those blankets back behind you you're going to rotate your rib cage and feel if you can focus on the ribs turning. Right, let your breath exhalate consciously, soundfully, and feel if you're moving from breath and ribs as you isolate into this spinal rotation. I suppose rib rotation would be a better way to explain it so you don't force your back. And now feel if you can gently elevate your chest when you come back center and switch to the other side. Turn left, right hand to left leg, rotate. Feel the broadness of the knees as if they're moving farther out and the solid connection of the feet together. And maybe your ribs feel that expansion and connectivity and your delivery of the position is completely to respect where your body's at. The amount of torque. And now come back through center and take a block, hands holding a wide block. As you elevate that block forward but straight up, lift so that the musculature in the arms are slightly bracing for that extension and that core chamber has motion. Now the beginning phase here is, I call this a foundation phase. Um, I created that concept. I'm not sure if I did it or not, but this is a lot of foundation work into balancing our hips. So you are pushing a little into your feet but in this position, we're trying to feel where the ribs flow up via the lift of the arms and then bend your elbows so the hands hold that block behind you and feel your elbows move in closer to the sides of your head. So feel where the elbows actually position towards your head, like you have a helmet. And then with that rib spatially kind of jutting forward, can you? take a slow, almost a cat spine. So you're gonna develop that movement of the block forward. Don't hurl it off of your mat space, but round your back so you feel that full stretch through the back, that flexion of the spine. And then inhale straight up with the block, just up. So it's called Usta Hastasana arms. Elevate and elongate the side waist. Okay, now let the elbows kind of flop to lower the block down. And let's use a block for this. So we're kind of staying with the alignment phases. So we have a block under the left knee and you're gonna take that left foot out of the belt and then loosen up the belt so much that you can push your right foot out. So it stretches the leg port right through the back of the knee. But when that right foot stretches open, also work with that belt in a, in a position on your kind of cross from that left hip through the lower belly. And then we'll take a lift with the arms, interlace your fingers so that you can use the connection of the hands to lift up through the waistband in breath. And as as your arms stretch open, broad in the chest, and I want you to bring that left arm behind you. So you're going to kind of curl through the shoulder, bend the left elbow so the top of the hand, the front touches to your left uh, side of your back, and then reach down to the belt 
And it's fine if you hold the belt on the inside track. I prefer to reach my hand wide and grasp onto it and clutch it together. So then if that band is pulling on my waist and then the side band is stretching. So you can go as, be courteous how far down you go with that bend of the right elbow. Maybe it's slightly up and you're turning your head down towards the right leg but connecting so it's a side reach, right? Versus how much twist you can conveniently portray. So notice that it's the side. Keep it with this side band. This is really important, side stretch. Okay, you can always kind of massage on that left side with your hand kind of the webbing of the thumb and the index, or reach through the arm and feel when that arm connects over the left side of your face and the turn of the waist is again pretty pretty general we don't want to overly rotate we want to send a message to the side stretch okay now you be the decider are you going to stay with this left arm behind you okay, i'm going to give everyone this personal choice on this stay with the leaning or in between, you're going to slide up. This is one option. You kind of have to see it to notice if you want to take part of it. And then you'll take a block in the front. So the block is in its mid height. And you'll lean just slightly forward, still completely on your sitting bones. They're still balanced on the bolster. But press out into that right foot. So if that loosens up, it's tension, then you know that you're probably not prepared for this one yet. So we want to keep the spine extended so it's not rounding. And of course, you could put your block higher. You could lift it up. You could get a chair, right? You could do a couple of other things to hold your body in alignment. You can wander over to a couch or bed or a kitchen counter. Okay, now with this kind of work of moving forward, those of us that came here, we're going to all move so that as we bring the hands on the belt, we're going to reach that right leg front and lift up through the leg so that you notice that this has some leg stretch and the belt tension loosens, right? As soon as you grab a hold and you start to serve that leg up in heron pose. So, how about tighten the belt a little bit, a little bits of tightening, and then move that belt so it goes a little higher into your back so that if you're able to use that as leverage to balance. So we're going to work on the cooperative kind of quality of the belt into a boat pose without the bolster. So somehow we'll levitate off the bolster in any moment. <laughs> okay. so. Feel how the, the powers of Zoom, right? Feel how the, um, the belt is high up. And some of us are going to proportionally have it like right out from the, the chest, some of the pecs, some it's gonna be stuffed into the armpits. But I would just warn you not to have it below um, where you feel your rib cage, right? So it's not at the belly zone, it's above. Okay, so now we're gonna slide down, we had no sand on that last one. We could have, but I forgot. So the, the foot is up and then I slide down off the bolster and I take both feet up into the belt. Okay, so encourage all this leg buildup on the right leg at least to help assist you to find some balance. You have a bolster, you could lean into it. I would take on that opportunity so that I'm not accumulating as much stress in my back. So when I feel the shape in the body, the body doesn't really know, <clears throat> well, you put your body in the shape to use the props to hold it and the circulation advantage that you get. But if you're stressing, then I would use more props, right? So your nervous system is, is not taking the, the, that abuse, <laughs> you could say. So if you reach forward or you have your elbows down, you have two options with the arms but can you feel your head gently motion back? 
is if you're going to look towards your toes and feel where the back muscles shift and maybe you have to tighten up your belt for a moment but where the back is supported for me is on my bolster for you it might you might be kind of moving away from it or you might be higher up off of your bolster with your feet a little more forward so you get a tiny bit more core yeah so what i see is some of us have that belt to the feet some to the knees. So see if you can have the belt around your feet to the soles of the feet to support you. Now, as you bend through and you lower down the feet, I want you to come back up. You have to be a little careful how you get back up since you're buckled up to the bolster. And we'll switch the side. So I'll take the belt into my left foot. Stretch the left leg out, loosen up the belt because lightly you tied yourself up in the last pose a bit. And then as you have second side helping, you grip up the buckle, the belt, so that the strap is firm around the hip bone. And then we've got a block under that right leg. I mentioned I forgot the sand on the first side. So if you're feeling like I gotta use my sand, I need to be anchored grounded, you can find that now or stay with the balance on both sides and take the arms so they spread open the chest first and then feel when you turn a little to the right side, you're gonna pivot and you're going to reach and get a hold of that belt and feel that rotation. So be cautious here on the grip. Now this time I took my grip instead of weaving it in my thumb and index, I just grasped the hold of it and turned and twisted the elbow under, and then took my right arm either up or it's behind your back. Okay, so feel where that builds balance in the hip. Again, if you wanna add that sand, you might add it, because it is pretty nice to have that grounding. But the placement centers the focus on this side, layer of your waist. So encourage where the waistband is elongating. So creep down that belt. See if you can slide your hand farther to the foot and work that connection of your right sitting bone. This is why the sand is helped, but it anchors the sitting bone on the right side from popping up. And you're working with this side band. So I hope you feel this in for your right side. It's that side band. It's a little bit towards the back in what's called the quadratus lumborum. And you might also feel it feeds into your back musculature. So encourage study of the self sensation, the feeling in your muscles. And loosen up with the breath here. Let your maybe your brain turns towards your left leg. Feel where there's a rotation through the neck. And maybe your head tips down, kind of bows to the left leg. Breathing. Now, as you begin the process of motioning up, we are still with that bell on the foot and the knee open. So as I take the block in front, I lean forward. Now I'm catching myself at the block is high for me. I've decided that's my best option. I'm catching what happens in my lower abdomen. So my work is on what's behind that spot face, trying to encourage that to lift up out of the pelvis. And that whole lifting process will shift very soon. You'll see the connections. Hopefully you notice them in time. But when you're moving forward, whether you have sand or not on the leg, see if you can work on reaching through the ribs. So that's going to arch the spine versus rounding the spine. So aim for arching and elongation versus rounding, or you could say extension. Push into the left foot, and then take your hands to the belt and pull the left leg forwards. 
And as the belt goes up a little higher, you might be moving the tension on the belt, taking it to a little bit more, cinching it up. And then as you get a gain of balance in the leg, take these moments, right, before we actually get on our back, that you can feel your sitting perspective. I mean, the benefits of it, the challenges of it, it's all there. You know, the challenges might be this lower torso feeling like it actually is lifted. So I really encourage you to use your extremities. So whether your arms forward, I like to hold the belt for this one. And then if I'm yanking on the belt, I'm going to keep the heel reaching and then feel as I pull across the ball of the foot, that lift, keep the leg straight. You know, see if you can mobilize the muscles along the seam at the top of that left knee and noticing what organizing potential you have. And it might feel a little bit intense, might not be for some. Breathing. And now as we've moved from this slightly interactive leg core practice to start, Let's start to soften that left knee. And as you lower down the foot, you know, come back to the Baddha Konasana. Come back without the belt. So we'll take off our core lift. And I want you to get a feel here. Before we move back to your seat, you've got your blankets behind you. Most of us have one or two. And you have your sitting bones and the span of the knees are open. And notice that this kind of it brings a little grip to your seat when you have your feet together, your knees open. It almost as if it becomes kind of a, a bounding, right? A binding quality here. So we're going to just focus for a second longer here on the lift of the ribs, no requirement to push your arms up or back. But what you might work with is simply thumbs in the armpits, my favorite variation. Try to lift up my armpits a little bit, thumbs hooking into them. And as we lift, like we've got suspenders on here, banker's pose, it used to be called banker's pose. So we have that lift and as the fingers stretch open gently, maintain that length. You know, this whole section when we're on our blankets is supported. So now we're gonna flatten that out. So you'll bring your knees to point up, and then scoot to the very edge of your bolster. So you're on the bolster with your seat. And as you lower back, you've got all this height now under you. Be sure you've got it all too. You've got it all attached, the blankets to the bolster. And so when you do lower back, it's almost as if you don't really notice this drop down of the waist. So it's all elevated, everything's up. Now, if you get to this position and it's a bridge pose and you notice, so oh, this is a little too easy going for me. Well, take the opportunity to just see what happens here with our focus. So we'll bring the right knee in towards the chest. We'll stretch our arms out. We'll minus any, any other props for the moment, but feel that width of the arms open and that step into the left foot. So I want you to feel if you can move your right knee without assistance with a belt or an arm towards your right side of your waist. So feel if you can progress that. And then you'll bring that right foot down and immediately switch to the left knee drawing in and push down into your right foot, develop some circulation on your right buttock of tone. So feel when your left knee draws towards you and take the time to feel that right foot pushing. Be patient with yourself in this process. Okay, now after you take a few more moments, we're doing each of these sides about 45 seconds, pretty much. Okay, feel if the back has a tiny bit of pressure on the right side of the lower back when you're 
legs are like this. And now you're going to lower down through that left foot and then stretch both legs down. You have so much height underneath you and it's, it's quite helpful. So this is a back bend, clearly a chest opening and back bend pose, but the surface uh, pressure is fairly mild. So if you can find where your sand went, take a sand bag across the thigh lids. And that means the legs are to be, you're kind of asking them to stay down. You know, this is basically a tactic of the grounded legs. But feel if you can get the legs close, like in the fibers in your thighs are responding with, you know, they don't like it. They're resisting that. So what you might do is take your feet a little bit apart, okay? So the toes have, you feel like they're turning in, but they're likely toes up. Right, I feel like my toes are turning in a lot, but I guess they're straight up. <laughs> so as you reach the human condition, as you reach the human condition, reach down to your heels, whether the feet are apart or not, but there is not a lot of excessive rotation out. So keep it fairly solid. Okay, now notice that. Now we'll take this into legs up. We'll take this into deeper Rita Karami. So we have this thigh awareness lengthening the front band. And now we're going to move our sand to our bellies, belly up, slide the right foot or the left foot in, then the other side, knees bending, pointing up. And then taking one knee at a time up, up with each foot. And as you start to get your sand, you might feel you can scoop your knees into your chest and then lift the sandbag over into the sole. So there's different ways. Some people bring knees out. If you can, you try to get your knees close and then get your sand up. It's part of it is getting there. There are ways of, of uh, advancing in your sequencing. So trying those options, if it's a little too much for your back to do that, then go how you can get your sand on your feet. And then if you're using sand, right? If you're not, you can use a belt across your feet to stabilize your legs and hold the elbows down. But with the feet flexing and this difference from how the legs are up, notice the coordination of the legs close. It's so much easier than if they're stretching down on the ground. And with the arms, take a belt, I want you to use that belt to position your chest open. Clearly, you can easily stretch your arms out and relax into this. But however your belt is, buckled or not, just grasp a hold. And hands hold the belt generous width. And when you move your arms straight up over the chest holding your belt, feel where there's slight stress in your arms. You can feel them strengthen. And then as you move them back overhead, encourage the slow process of internalizing this inversion. You can always remove these blankets. If you do not agree with this version of the blankets all along the spine, you can always take them out and come back to what you're used to, the blanket under your head. You know, you don't have to agree with it. So I would encourage you to sample it. If it feels too easy, just let it be too easy for today. And see how your body responds, especially your nervous system. And as I hold my belt, I notice when I take the arms over, you might notice that one hand goes down faster than the other, or there's some differences in the ratio of balance. So I want you to get a pretty Discipline grip on the belt. Try to bring your elbows open like you're touching the floor with the elbows. And then remove the grip of the belt. Let your hands let go and stretch your palms open and out. Out, open, eyes perhaps closing and belly centers the breath. 
this may feel like your beginning practice moments, right? When we center on breath and the body is very symmetrical. Feel the feet flexing. Notice if there's any part of your body experience that you could illuminate, right? Kind of reinforce and better. So we all have some area that we feel is starting to open up, but we're not sure how to refine that. So one place I notice is the back of my legs. They can adapt. Now, after I've done this so many times, it's quite simple, but, you know, I'm getting some, you know, possibly compensation work on one side, compensatory patterns. So feel the back of the pelvis maybe press into the bolster, okay? Opposite of prolapse. That's the complete opposite of losing control in the center, this position. So kind of notice, is that what's strange? Is that the difference from your daily, you know, experience of being on your feet and with the pelvic organs dropping down with gravity? So use it, the force of the back of the pelvis, and then as your knees might be able to take a little more bending, I want you to stay with the focus of lifting up through the heels, flexing the feet. Okay, now you're going to bend through the knees. And if you have a belt, you'll be able to take that and keep it actually for the next pose. And those of us that have the sand, I want you to feel where the back fills up with that circulation through the back. It warms up the back nicely. And then lift up your hands to get the sand and take the left leg down and place the sand on the top of the thigh and then find a belt, guess where it is, and place it below your, uh, under your right foot that's up. And two, two tactics here, okay. Some of you might wanna wander your leg a little bit side to side naturally and feel the, the scale of circulation in the side of the leg up into the hip joint. This would be kind of a friendly variation to move into the leg cycle into the back muscles. But you know, kind of unpack it from here. My left leg is pretty passive now. But that right leg is certainly reversing the flow back to my heart and lungs. So it's doing the science of the pose. It's my pose, uh, it's essential, right, for the science behind legs up. They have my leg up, one of them. So feel if you can work with that lift. And brain foot is a really good way to do that because you'll have traction going, but you don't have to be continuing the the pressure to, to deepen. So taking that belt, well, if it's already buckled up, you're kind of already to that next phase, huh? So I'm gonna get my buckle so it's at the side. I can actually get some traction there if I can pull it or loosen it. So I'm gonna bring my belt loop over the back of my, over my head so it's around to hold into the center. We don't have to specify an actual bone, but just notice, where does it feel supportive? And it might intensify this left leg sensation. So don't be too surprised how these things shift pressure. So if you are averse to doing brain flow, you don't have to do this, of course. You can either hold the belt or you can have the belt off your head and in your hand, so between the thumb and the index finger, I have the belt connected and my hands are together and they're over head. Okay, so this has a, a different force, but my hope for you, if you choose the shoulder um, traction, that you keep about the same range of tension in the leg. So the reason the brain float can be nice for the inverted energetic is that it, it, pretty, it stays consistent. It doesn't flow back and forth. So time in the position is essential. 
a strong minute to two. I don't know what justifies a strong minute or a mellow minute. How about a mellow minute? So the left foot could turn out. I'm not going to discipline how that foot ought to be. I would like it to stay positioned so the heel is anchored. And I'm trying to keep it as much up with the toes. So my sand, I could slide it a little bit down the leg. And if it starts to go to the outside of the leg, you probably need to bring it closer to the inside of the leg. You know, that doesn't make it easier, does it, to move your sand on the whole experience. So traction we go. Breathing, so the belly actually pops up. Pop up belly. And on the exhale, the belly lowers down towards the spine. Now with the continuation of reversing the flow of gravity to the heart, the lungs, and the brain, and you shift the sides calmly. So that will probably be to move the sand to the belly. And take that left leg to foot to the floor, and then move it up into the belt. And then when you change that right foot out, you might have to hold your belt behind your head carefully so it doesn't slip off or surprise you with its movements. And um, as that right leg lowers down, you might find some habits that you have without the sand that make it easier to be in the shape. If you don't like to use the sand on this one, don't, right, if it feels too much. But you might put the sand lengthwise straight down the leg versus across, right? So if I'm going to go straight down the leg, I do feel like the foot doesn't turn out as much. I have to figure these things out one side to the next. At least I only got two sides. But um, my length of my front body on the right side, so my right hip is completely mellow. But my left hip, if I put my fingers, like my, if I placed fingertips to my hip bone, front hip bones, I do want them fairly symmetrical here. So if it's like you feel that left hip popped up quite a bit, then your work is on really drilling this traction focus. So maybe you need to loosen your belt on one side more than the other. It's not likely that you're symmetrical. Right, you probably have some differences, and you might be working towards finding some better balance, right, from even joining this class. Gotta be some reason. You don't have to put your reason in the chat if you don't want to. Okay, so explore the flexing of the left foot. I can't help but explore it on both feet. Simple arm stretch open. If you aim for the arms back, it's quite stressful on the neck, right? So you'll find that to open the arms like the same gesture if you're going to give a bit of like a giant ball a big hug, right? It's that same openness in the back. So nothing wrong with kind of playing with motionary patterns. Right, not compensatory, but motion. So that might surge your head to lift up when you move your arms up. So use the weight of the arms on the floor. I imagine this blanket is kind of comfy for some people and they have the support. And I'm curious about that. So noticing your hips though, are they losing their, the hip bones in the front are different than the hip bones in the back. Those will not be even because your leg is up. But if you're starting to yank this left leg back, then keep pressing. If you need to loosen your belt, don't stress out yourself to do the shape. 
you might have shakiness in the leg. Okay, we'll go into widespread panic is what I call this one. So we take off our sand, we take our hands to the belt, and you'll want to feel when you slide the belt off the back of your head that your head easily lowers to the blanket and the feet both go up and I move out. Now, if I take the buckle part close to me, um, then I can loosen it or I can tighten it. And there's nothing wrong with aiming the feet to flat up, but rather than pulling them further back, I wanna keep them the outwards and basically in proximity up from my hip joint. So I'm not aiming to get my legs towards a plow pose back overhead. I can't imagine you would want to offer that to your back here. As some might, tempting to rock back a little bit. So if it's easy for you and your legs, let's say this is no jittery, there's zero jit. Zero jit, short for jittery. You can loosen it up. And I would aim for that. I would aim for loosening because if you were working on a balance, standing balance pose, you want to kind of train your leg musculature connection to your hip, um, your sitting bone, and then that leads up and around to the hip to feel this broadness at the back of the pelvis. And then notice if your seat feels like it widens or if it's just the legs. We want both. Okay. So I'm going to hold my belt. You don't have to, right? You can. Let the arms stretch out and see if you can manage the balance in your core. If it's too much in your back muscles, then you've gone too far. If you're starting to feel achy in your back, then your legs are too wide. You're probably shaking undertone. So feel for a few more moments about, we'll do this, we're in this one about a minute. So we're timing our, our poses a little science-wise today. So if your feet flex, great. If they cannot deal with that, do not bother them. And maybe the muscles around the knees are feeling some tone, right? That's the idea is that you do feel like they're straight-ish, okay? Now, as you bend your knees, and now straight to bend. Straight up, your, some of you are in bend, <laughs> okay? Bring your hands up to the belt, and now my legs kind of flow back to get that. So I'm gonna bend my knees more to get the belt. So I do less of that drop back of the legs. And then slide the feet together so they pull in, okay? Now, as we take our belt off our feet, there's a bit of a shift here with your blanket. So move your belt aside. And if you wanna cradle your legs in it and kind of finish this feeling of the blankets along your whole spine, uh, really notice the lift in your back, the little support you have. And then arms stretch open, knees side to side. And they're sort of like windshield wiper pattern, but your feet aren't on anything. So we want to direct that as the, the naming of this, but I don't really see why it would be any different. So I question that. But as your knees go side to side, can you feel the legs kind of slip away, right? They don't stay completely tight, right? They have a little spacing. So to make this convenient for you to come out of the blanket, I want you to roll a little bit to the side and then take, you're on your elbow length, and take a blanket off, add one blanket, well, keep one blanket, but take it across so it's horizontal across your mat, and then you're going to lower back down. So I know this is a little funny. You still got this bolster thing under your, your pelvis. So it's a challenge. Hold on. If you have the bolster uh, handles, it's great. As this is kind of helpful for your core work here. So the left leg stretches down. The right leg goes to the chest. And now my back has not as much lift, right? Now I've got to work with my spine warmth and switch sides, left knee in, right leg down. We still are on the bolster with our pelvis. Take two more of those, alternate, or maybe four if you like speed in your practice. A little bit of momentum is good for the aging 
body, right? Especially in yoga, not too slow. Warm up the joints. Okay, next time we consider moving our feet both up, I want you to bring your hands so that they're on the side of the bolster closest to your waist, knees to chest, just enough that you can push the bolster carefully, not so it's not under your, your pelvis anymore. It's just in front of your pelvis. But I'm going to give you just a heads up. We're not doing bridge, right? So if you're going to start getting up and down with the hips, we will do that, but without the bolster today. So try to has a pause on that habit. So we have our feet on the bolster and actually try this. Bring your feet on the other side of the bolster. Pull your bolster close so it's between your buttocks and your ankles. Give this one a try. Okay, now the back muscles are likely arching, right? You've kind of tilted because you were used to that blanket and now you're maybe like trying to figure out what to do with these bones. So what I'm gonna offer as an idea is to put the right foot, lift it, cross the foot to the right, left knee. I know I can't cross on the right knee because that's the right foot. Let the right knee open, okay? So your left foot is on the floor. That's difference for the moment. Okay, now arms go overhead straight back, reach to both of the upper limbs. Okay, feel your back muscles kind of melt into the floor. The right side of the back might be more pressure than the left. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of coordination. Now, notice if there's any stretch here, get any stretch on the inner thigh. And now the hands are going to go forward, and I would encourage you to use them to help you out. So you're going to lift up the left foot. Now that takes some core to put that foot on the bolster. Okay. Knee goes open on the right still. So does this feel like a little more stretch with the foot on the bolster? Okay. You know what? I guess we don't get answers. <laughs> so now you can hold the back of the left leg. Pull that leg towards your center and let the left foot either fling up, it has an opportunity to fling, it can stay down and relaxed. But you do find it necessary to hold the back of the left leg to get this position. So you can use a belt behind the leg if you can't get the leg. Some people like to use a block behind the leg and press because the hands are a little bit more, um, well, they're formed kind of perfectly to get around your leg. If you notice your, just the, even though you're a visceral live being that changes with each moment as far as its circulation, it's, uh, it's nice to feel that visceral hand behind the leg, but the block is firm and right? it doesn't have the same life force. So maybe you want the block. Okay, now we're going to lower the left foot, let go, and take a, if the bolster feels too, too close to you, you might tap it with your fingers so it nudges a little farther down. But you'll move the right leg and cross it completely over the left, and then knees will guide to the right. Use a block under your right leg if you need that. If it doesn't need anything, it can go freestyle. But as the arms stretch open, You'll likely feel this through the left side of the hip in through the thigh. And the whole left leg, well, actually, it's not the whole leg. You feel it isolated from the left hip bone through the lateral side of that leg, right? The lateral rotators. And now feel how that right leg clutches onto the left and reaching that right foot, so it's like you're trying to press down, down to the floor, and feel where the arms are open. I'm assuming you feel the left hip a bit. And now get a belt. This isn't too tricky, but it is focusing on the same hip. And you notice your left hip is a little bit guarded because it has something trapping it. So when you move your knees back center, uncross and bring your belt into the left foot, relax the right leg on the bolster and cross the left leg to the right. Keep it real simple. Don't get too 
wonky about, well, should it go exactitude? Just cross it and sweeping through the outer spectrum of this left leg. If you get really busy with the focus and you've got to get sand on it, you might pause and just let it be the belt. So you don't need to overload the joint. Just feel how the movement stretches the joint. My right leg makes it kind of basic. Just holds it centered. I'm focusing on the left hip. Great, breathe. And now when you come back up with the left foot, we'll take the belt off. We'll bring our feet together, our knees out in Baddha Konasana. So you're in Supta Baddha Konasana now. You're in a recline, right? So just feel the knees out, the feet together. Notice the inner angle on the inferior angle here. Okay, and then step the right foot on the other side of the bolster. Push the bolster closer to your tush. Left foot up to the right knee. Right, so you just swap right into it. It's pretty easy. A lot of this is build up that you've worked with. And if you're pretty comfortable with this right now, step the right foot up on the bolster. Use the bolster to push the pose deeper. So this is just progressive states, right? I start at the floor. I don't feel a lot of my hip. Then I bring my foot up, it moves it closer. It's almost just like pulling your leg towards your chest. And then those that want to deepen it, We'll pull the back of that right leg, hold behind the leg, and draw the thigh towards you. Clearly, it's going to go to you, not to, to somebody else. <laughs> Let your spine notice the ease and length. And maybe you let your head nod side to side. Breathing. Right leg could kick up, you could pump it or keep it very still. Relax the neck. Receive your breath. And just carefully start to come into that counter twist. So noticing when you let go of the leg and the foot is on the bolster, the left leg crosses over the right, the knees go to the left, and here we are onto the other hip. You know, the abdomen still is flowing with the breath, but sometimes in a twist, we constrict that movement. And I don't think it's intentionally that you are thinking, I better tighten my tummy. But, you know, when the leg crosses over that hip barrier, naturally you kind of cinch up in the center so that you can keep the rotation. So I'm gonna encourage you to consciously relax your abdomen. And sometimes that's a conscious effort, I think, that you have to like give it the freedom to just relax. So then the muscle dialogue is that it's the smooth muscle, the nervous system's less stressed out, it's kind of an overall, um, you know, calming, you know, as far as vagal tone and so forth. So just kind of notice what occurs with your conscious, deliberate calm of the belly. And you might notice the right buttock is quite a bit higher on the second side than the other off the floor. I'm assuming you, you'll start to feel where you have patterns of favoring, or it's easier on one side on the knee joint or the hip joint. So try to direct your focus. If you're clenching in the hip, like you, you can tell that you're trying to grip it more, feel if the con concentration of the position can serve as, a, as the stretch, right, versus putting the leg in the position and gripping. See if you can just keep the leg over that right thigh. And then when you're ready, you're going to take the knees back center, left leg down on the bolster, take a belt under the right foot, and then cross that leg to the left. Likely it's going to feel a little weird in the pelvis, right? Because you're kind of crossing over that center um, guarded area. 
but you know, you might find, oh, this is pretty smart, right? I can really connect into my hip. It's very isolated. My back is so safe with the position. Finding some benefit to doing the most simple, gentle, therapeutic shapes. Okay. Stay with it a little longer. Be patient. I think that's, you, you probably only join if you're somewhat patient with yourself. You're the patient. So as you provide that reach with that right foot into the belt, press. And now with that right knee having a mild bend, you know, feel how you connect back into a simplicity. So now we come back with that left and pulling the belt, bringing your, take your belt off your foot, come back to feet together, knees out, reclining cobbler, okay? Now feel the hand, so it's like you're, um, if, you've never, if you've ever done this pose where you sit on your hands, right? So you put your hands and they're kind of under your rear on the sides and you, you just kind of squish them, kind of a, and it used to be one where it was taught where you make your hands in tight fists and you sit on those, but I don't know where that came from, but I'm sure there's some, something behind that, um, some esoteric something. But when the knees move open, you know, notice the lines of energy, the meridians, right? You'll notice these, you can focus on them as acupressure points, meridians, um, connective tissue channels, anatomy trains all kinds of focused thoughts those could be, but let's just be with our feet together. Now let's loosen up that tension that you're kind of lifting the pelvis up. And I want you to purposely sink the pelvis, the buttocks. And then when your knees motion back up, we're going to push. Now there's, there could be some props to the right of your mat. So kind of notice what's over there on the right but you're gonna push your bolster to the right side so it's lengthwise besides your mat on the right. And then you'll place your feet back to where the, back on the floor, or they're now on the floor. Take a belt. I'm gonna have you um, unbuckle that so you've got lots of belt, no restrictions there. Okay, and hug the knees into the chest and scoop up the um, ankles. So my belt is on the top of my foot no different than when you have your belt wrapped around like we did in the start, except for my feet won't be together. They'll be near each other, but they won't be soul to soul. So I've got my knees about hips distance. Now, do your feet stay hips distance? That's the trick, right? So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is flex them. Um, you know, be aware of if they turn in or what they might be trying to do, but you're gonna push your feet down on the floor and have that belt grip. So I'm reaching down as far as I comfortably can with my hands. I'm not trying to wince or if I look like I'm wincing, I'll, I'll try to practice without wincing. So I feel a little resistance. Now, if you notice, I don't know what you can see with, in the screen, but tendency is the knees will go over the ankle sometimes. So you never are, are wrong if you try to push your feet forward. Okay, so I have resistance with my hands holding the belt. I'm going to lift up. So go ahead and lift up your hips. I forgot to mention you could remove your blanket, but that's up to you. I'm taught with the blanket often. So I hold on to the belt and I feel my shoulder blades moving down. Now, I don't know if you can notice your shoulder blades feeling like they move down your back, but they certainly aren't pulling up to your neck anymore. Okay. Now relax your grip on your belt, just let it go. And bring your hands underneath you so you're interlacing your fingers, making a fist. And then I want you to go ahead and sit on your hands. I know this is an odd one, but it's all, it always works with the shoulders. So sit on the hands for a moment, feel the shoulders trying to move back. There's differences in your elbows, I'm sure. But you're sitting there for a moment onto your hands. And then you're going to push down to your feet, hopefully, and lift up the hips so that your hips are now, your buttocks are up from the hands. 
and feel the shoulders back. Now bring your hands apart, lift up your hands so that you have these uh, robot arms, elbows down, hands are up from the sides of the waist. And then feel if you can lift up a little bit higher. Or you might be able to. You could probably if you lift your heels, but stay honest. Okay. Now lift up your heels. Dishonest, lift up your heels. And bring your arms overhead. Oh, that was so much better. Lower your spine down. Okay. All right, now we still got that belt somewhere there, I know. So I want you to reach down and get a hold of the belt and then hold on to it. Make sure your feet are wide enough. Always bring them a little wider. Go for it. Take the feet as wide as you need to so you feel supported. Lift your hips. Okay, feel the gentle grasp of the belt. Don't overdo it. Just hold on so you have the secure force of lengthening the front of the hip bones, the quads. Okay, all the way through the leg path. And then let go of the belt and bring your arms overhead. Try to keep your heels down. Breathe. Start now. And exhale, heels down. And tuck the tailbone under, tail in as you lower your spine. So really focus on the spine lowering down. Ease the back. Okay, now bring your knees in, just a moment of the knees in, so the sacrum releases. Move the belt aside if it's distracting. And I'm focusing on my knees in without really pulling them. I'm just gonna use my back, uh, my natural back strength to do that. So that's something you might advise yourself to do when you do your practice sometimes, even if you do just a few poses on your back is feel what it's like when you really let your knees go in with their own, your own mobility in your spine. The right leg is going to reach down and the left thigh crosses to the bolster. And now is when you can add that ball. So if you have a ball, add it to the sacrum. If you don't use a ball, no worries. Okay. Sand to the exterior thigh is, is kind of essential on this one after all we've gone through. Um, and spread it out. So if your sandbag is kind of on um, just one piece of the hip, you might lengthen it on the whole exterior, that lateral rotator of the thigh. And the ball might feel good and it might not be appropriate some days for your sacrum. So if it doesn't feel right, you know, you can remove that idea. And as the left arm stretches open, you can feel where the shoulder neutralizes, bending the elbow, and then let your head turn to the left. Great. Feel the widening of the back, the low back, and the placement of the breath across the intercostals. So even though your, your breathing muscles are primarily the diaphragm, that's your primary, but the secondary is the intercostals, the muscles between the ribs. So they are important. And you exercise them by expanding the rib cage with the breath. That's the only way to get that oxygen intake via the breathing into the lungs is that expansion. It's not the only way, it's a way to get more in. So it's not, it's not, many times we don't get as much as we could. We're shallow. So em emphasize the width of the breathing in the ribs. And give it a few more, plenty of moments here to establish your right leg where it could be, meaning you could bend your right leg a little more so the foot draws up towards the buttock. And that might be a nice rotation for your rib cage. But if it hurts your knee, you don't offer that, right? So if you bend your right knee and it's causing pressure, then you back off. But some people who might even have a knee issue, this might not bother them.
we now visualize, since that's part of our brain um, awareness is visualization, right? So you're firing off still in that in front of the brain. Um, you know, really visualize this, this whole spectrum of left arm through pit, through side layer of the leg. And the arena that might feel like it could get more uh, on the receiving end is probably above the hip. Okay, so feel the breath. And then turn your head back on center. Okay, take your time and move the ball, move the sand. And then thoughtfully, right, move across. So I'm gonna encourage you to try a bridge pose in between with no props. So I bring the left knee up and I move the knee straight towards center line, step the foot down, and then find my footing a little wider than hips distance. My knees will probably jut out a little bit. And then I just position my back and my pelvis, center it. Hands could be thighs or on the floor and then just let the hips lift up for a moment. So you're balancing the load in your hip bones, but instead of trying to push the hips and grit and tighten muscles, feel that your focus is on lifting the back of the pelvis up and then moving your shoulders back and down as the primary focus, shoulders back and down. So it's an inversion that way, right? Instead of um, this forceful pressure through the feet only, so I'm trying to use my midsection to lift up. That seems to be a little bit of an improvement. Now lift your heels and then connect to the part of your back that's all the way in the center in your spine. And then lower that spine spatially down. Let the abdomen soften. And then as you feel the tail touching, as much as you've noticed it's a tail, yeah, and you might windshield wipe through the knees here. This is a good windshield wiper moment. They are spontaneous. And the knees are shifting side to side. The feet on the floor are a little wider than hips distance. And as you get the bolster, you're going to move it to the left side of your mat. This feels like a very full practice today, like intensive for some reason. So. And we got a little bit of time, but we're in this final phase right now. The final 15. So we've got our bolster on the left. And when we place that left leg down, you might work on like feeling the reach down through the left heel, feel the right leg kind of prepared to do something. And then the right knee bending is kind of opening up some awareness on the right side of the waist, right? That's already starting. So when you cross over to the, the bolster, be aware that the thigh moving to the left, it's gonna roll on the left buttock too, right? You're gonna have to pivot on the left hip bone. You can't stay where you could, you could stay stuck and then push, but it would not go in alignment with the, you know, usually the guidelines, right? Is to keep that mobility uh, versus um, stiffening. So when I cross over and I get my ball and my sand, I'm all set, setting up. Yeah, and feel where the waist is centered. This is important because in the final stretch today, we're gonna go into a little cat cow, you know, dog pose or puppy pose, whatever works for you. Um, but as you move into this rotation, you wanna get a feel of that left knee relaxing, the bottom leg. So that will help those of you that bend your bottom leg and scoop your heel up towards your rear, because that will give it smooth muscle motion. So feel what you can do that's organized with your sand. And then as you open the arm out and turn your head to the right, pose well, right? Breathe slow. Your left arm could be anywhere it likes to be, if it wants to be on your ribs, on your belly, on the floor, right? It 
doing something maybe. Okay, but when the arm is positioned open, you do get a feel where your head rolls to that right side. I know we're back to noticing if there's tension in the belly, but I suppose overanalyzing is not going to be reinforced calm. So receiving your breath and relaxing on its outward motion. You know, when you feel that motion of the left leg, if it's straight or if it's bending, if you have a bending left leg, I want you to keep it in the bending position in the next few moments when we move out. So stay with that positional fold in the hip section. The area that has not had a lot of concentration is the resistance right in the middle when we're on all fours, which we'll get right to. So we want to get a nice full body practice. So when you feel this crossover angle in the waist and the hip, kind of notice these areas are warmed up and then moving your ball, if you have that first, and then moving the sand second. And as you begin to move over this time, we're going to keep going left. We're not going to go center bridge, we're gonna go left, okay? So if you're still kind of finding your way to get off your props, do that. But rotate left and then turn. So I'm gonna bring my knees together. I'm kind of pushing my bolster because I'm focused on my body's turn. And then I want you to use your hands to bring you up and pull in your blanket, center of your mat, and then scoot your hips on it or your left hip or right hip, and then swing your feet behind you, take your bolster in front, and then put your knees on the one blanket and the bolster is in front of the knees. Okay, so you're on hands and knees, and that shoulder distancing is kind of not re re reasonable for some people here. It might be wider, but offer the connection here of your spine to rounding, toes under or toes relaxed flat, chin to chest. Inhale, arch the spine. And exhale, round and hollow the belly. So you're gonna feel that scooping of the torso in and up. Now, if this doesn't work for you with your palms down, if the wrists are frenetic with that, you could put your elbows down on some blocks. Okay, so that's an option. Okay, so give it a few more and I'll show that block option. So go, continue on the path. Um, so if you have your blocks under, it's the same direction, but your elbows are on blocks. But that will require you to work a little harder in the back muscles. Right, to get them to move because now your arms aren't straight. So find that work with the back. Okay. Now we're going to push back to dog pose. So if you've got your blocks, I love using blocks in advance for dog pose because I'm short, but you might go with palms on floor. Lift up the knees. You can have your elbows on the ground, your hands on blocks, your hands on the ground. You can choose those three versions. But press back so that the brain flows down and it's an inversion right through the neck, right? You're reaching. Now, if your blocks get slippery, then you probably need to shift off of blocks. So just be aware. Blocks under your elbows don't get slippery as much as the hands. And now as you lift up your heels, you're gonna flow back down to hands and knees and reach your hands on the sides of the bolster farther forward, stretch, stretch, and then lengthen to up dog with minimal um, extreme pressure in your hands. So if this is getting very full on your wrists, 
I want you to bend your elbows and just lower, but be ever so careful that when I bend my elbows, it does change the tension in my back, not necessarily for the good. So sometimes we feel better with the arms straight with our back muscles. It's kind of an interesting science there, but take the legs farther out so that it's easier in your back to have the wide stance with the knees. So the knees are not together. And then come down all the way so the elbows are on the floor and your ribs are flowing forward and the waist relaxes all the way through, belly moving into the bolster and relax the buttocks. Okay, so let the elbows press and take that sphinx pose. If you can look forward, that would be ideal, but shrug the shoulders back, even if they still feel like they're living it up, you know, towards the front. This is the final moments here that we're working before relaxation. So try to stay a little aligned with your waist stretching. Okay, and now bring your hands back and feel the shoulders moving back. Your hands could be on the floor or the blocks. And I want you to keep your elbows by your sides and maintain so it's a cobra pose. So that means we don't have limbs apparently. So I'm not gonna be forcing my hands down into the floor to push me up. I'm gonna maybe lift them up a little bit off the floor. So you can prove you don't have hands on the floor. And then feel the elbows back, feel the fingers open, tops of the feet press on the ground and lift into up dog. Inhale, forward chest. And exhale, fine tune. Hips back, now two versions for everybody. Either child's pose, so the bolster could be under your forehead or under your belly, right? Child's pose or standing forward bent, okay? So those that want to stay down can stay in child's pose. And those that are okay coming back to a dog pose and then to standing forward bend. Feet are wide, a little wider than hips distance. Hands hold the elbows, traction the spine. Let the weight of the head stretch the back. Sitting bones up. Right, recall when we use the belt for some of you around your feet and your sacrum. You really want your sitting bones up. So lifting, lengthening, and inverting. So the brain is below the heart. Now, as we come out, if you have the option to let your body release the arms and trust your balance. You're gonna to start to walk on forward if you're in child's pose. Carefully start to join to come up to table. And then we'll move our bolster forward and we'll take a leg, any leg forward that you like the most to cross forward. And then move both of your legs in a wide stance sitting on your blankie and take your bolster, tip it up to the short end. Take a few moments here. So let the legs have that wide stance like we did on our back, All right? So a wide stance with the feet and try to keep an extension of the spine so it's not rounding as much, right? So reach and maybe relax your neck. I think it'd be nice. Okay, relax your footing entirely. And then you're gonna take your blocks and position them so they're at the mid height. And with that mid height block set, we're gonna turn the bolster so it's on top of the block. So it's at that mid height. And then take your extra blanket and Make a little bit of a roll with that blanket. So you turn it, roll up the blanket, place it on top, and then reach your hips down on the floor, the legs up on the bolster blanket, bench, your bolster bench, and then flow either the blanket lengthwise under your spine. And as you lower down onto that bolster bench final pose, you can put your sand across your ribs and or your shins and flow the chest 
open into the arms. Feel the eyes and any musculature in the face rest back into the brain and return using all your resources and then letting go of what you effort into. So relaxing the effort of in and out breath. Empty the lungs. Let your eyes feel like they are a bit of a coating to relax the brain, closing the eyelids. And feel the belly lift with the inhale and gently flow back to the floor. Use the sand as a strengthening for your diaphragm, for your lungs. Empty the weight of the hips. And finally, are your legs relaxed? Are they clenching? Are they truly resting on the props? so that your ankles are gently floating. Inhale for a count of four. And exhale for five to six. Now, as you motion your arms a little closer in, feel them gather towards the sides and momentum of the shoulders back. Essentially, when we start to move our weight off of our ribs, feel if you can reconnect to that source of movement of the shoulders back and down. So as we start to move to a sitting position, we all will have our way of getting there. Some of you might put your feet on the edge of the blanket and get the back to open and lengthen. And then when you cross over from back to 